Hello everybody and welcome to Joe's Barbecue House. Today we're going to do some boneless pork butts, but I'm going to turn them into slices today. So we'll only be doing internal temps of 145 to 150 degrees. We're going to do it low and slow and we are going to use this tip top temp as you see right here installed. This option for this uh, Weber kettle I bought because of Meat Cranium Barbecue and Review, aka Meathead, had turned me on to this. It worked out so well for him, I'm sure it'll work out great for me as well. We're also going to be using my dual rack mod. We're also going to be using this Cajun Bandit smoke ring that came with the smoker kit from Cajun Bandit. I'm not using the stack part of it that came with this, but I will be using this. I'll be using my half inch diffuser plate that was made by Dave Tomasco, which I'll show you guys here in a bit, along with my dual rack mod that I come up with. We're also going to use these lighter cubes to light up the coals. Here you'll see I have one full basket, the large chimney. I'm just going to go ahead and dump these right in the center. Just kind of scoot them around. They don't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to go ahead and fill this up about a quarter way full of charcoal and get these lit up. All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get these ladder cubes lit. We get this basket put over the top that's filled about a quarter way with uh, Kingsford charcoal. And once that's completely lit, we're going to dump them right over top of that, the wood chunks. All right, everybody, what we're going to do here is I'm going to take the Joe's Barbecue House uh, SPG and we're going to use the Sweet Heat All-Purpose Rub and the Southern Barbecue Blend. If you guys haven't used this stuff, you're missing out. But we're going to go ahead and uh, get these seasoned up and I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see here, this side here has the all-purpose rub, and this side here has the barbecue blend. Well, it's the southern barbecue blend. Both of them has been treated with the Joe's Barbecue House SPG. We're going to go ahead and set up the grill, wait for it to come up to temp. Meanwhile, I'm going to foil these up, put them back in the refrigerator to let all these rubs uh, sweat in. Also, if you guys were curious, I did not use any binders on any of these butts i don't use binders at all all i do when i take it out of the cryovac is i'll rinse them off with cold water and that's enough moisture uh for your rubs to sweat into the meat okay so what i'm going to do is go ahead and add our lit coals to our charcoal as you can see they're fully lit i'm going to dump them right over the top of those wood chunks which is hickory by the way i'm not sure if i mentioned that earlier then what i want to do is take my diffuser plate and put it right over the top just like this. Take my T-handle off. And as you can see here, uh, Dave Tomasco designed this to where I can use this Allen screw and get it screwed in there. And just go until it bottoms out. And there you go. Now here you'll see I have approximately an inch and a half gap around the outside when I use this Cajun banded fire ring that came with their smoker kit. And now what I'm going to do is add my dual grate system which is made up of nothing but 5 16 hardware so they're just standard nut and bolts and just to be sure that this tip top thing is working correctly i'm going to monitor it with the grill eye pro meat thermometer which i'm going to put a couple of probes on each side of the grill to maintain and see how well this thing maintains the temps okay so the first thing i did is you want to keep your vents wide open and try and keep your tab at the top you can, you can see you have two options you can have it at the bottom you don't want it here because this slopes down this way and it could fall off if you picked up the lid but i found right off the bat that if you keep this tab up here then you take your unit and you push this gasket that's right there just push it down some to where it's past that aluminum lip there then what you're going to do is set it on here just like this and then push down just a hair that way it seals it now if i want to pick up my lid i could lift it up i can move it around as you can see and it ain't falling off Okay, it doesn't suction cup it or nothing like that. That silicone gasket sticks really good to the lid here from what I could see so far. But like I said, this is my first time using it. Uh, Meathead, uh, thanks for the advice on, and the reviews you've done on this model. I appreciate it. So far, so good. So there's, um, well, I'll show later, but there's a chart that you could go by. It's according to your ambient temperature where you would set this dial. So right now we're at 60 degrees. And according to that chart, if you look, I'm right in between the three and the four, which should put me right at 250 degrees. So what we're gonna do is just let this thing heat up and see how well and how this thing responds. 
Now I'm not sure if I was supposed to keep it at zero when I started the grill. I think I was supposed to, but it's fine. I'm just playing around with it and then showing you guys how I'm doing it. I just set it right off the bat to uh, 250 degrees. So if something changes, I will let you know. All right, everybody, as you can see, that that flap did close when I set it. Remember, it was up higher. It was like up here somewhere. And it did lower quite a bit. We've been rolling this for about 20 minutes. And the only thing I could see as to why we have such a temperature change there is quite a few reasons. If you look here, I personally think that this stock gauge is broke. That's why I don't like using them. This thing should be up higher than what it is. Once I tapped on it, it was actually on uh, 200. And then when I tapped on it, it started to rise. That's why I always upgrade my lids to the River Countries or the Teltrus. But either way, as you guys can see on this Grillite Pro, uh, Probe 3, I'm going to show you here, is sitting right here in the front. And then uh, Probe 4 is back there in the rear. And as you can see, I got one facing this way. And then I have one facing that way. Just so I could get an all around to see what the temps are. And if you look, I'm not sitting, you know, over the, where the main flame comes. I kind of want to focus on the plate here. Uh, other variables that are going on here is this plate is a half inch thick. For those that don't know, half inch is really thick for a diffuser plate. And it takes a while for it to heat up and, and the temperatures to even out. That's what I think is going on here. See, our temps are dropping out, obviously, because I have the uh, lid off. Now, as you can see here, right off the bat, it's already starting to rise up on its own. See that? How, you know, see how, how much more it's been opening there? So I'm going to go ahead and put this lid back on. And I'll return when I get the, uh, the pork butts put on. All right, everybody, as you can see, I got these two monster boneless pork butts on. If I haven't mentioned before, I got these at Costco. And here I have a meat probe and the thickest part of the meat on both of them, as you can see. And here on the Grill Eye Probe, you see they're both reading at 32 degrees. That's one. Uh, number one is the closest one you see here, and pork butt number two is over here. Also, this is the Sweet Heat Barbecue Blend, and this one here is the All-Purpose Rub. And of course, as I mentioned before, they all have the SPG applied to both. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue to monitor these temps. I'm going to go ahead and pop the lid on. And Houston, we have a problem. My lid doesn't shut. Oh boy. Okay, well, I got to make some adjustment here, guys. I'll be back. Okay, everybody, sorry about that. The problem here was is I had these probes up here on the top, and what happened was it wasn't allowing it to shut on the dome end of the lid. So I put them in through the side through the thickest parts of the meat, and as you can see, our lid shuts just fine now. And there's a few inches left on the top here. I checked it all. Everything's fine. As you can see, that thing opened up quite a bit. So once it heats up, it will shut back down. All right. We'll see you guys in a few hours and see how this baby's turning out. So as you guys can see, this thing here is working out great. I'm really enjoying the way it's operating. The only thing I had to do was, you know, shake the coals and look at them temps. I got the ambient temps on the chart set to the dial here, and we are looking good. All right, everybody, check it out. We are three hours and 50 minutes in. This thing is doing great. Let's come over here to the um, smoke block. As you can see here, we're at 248, okay, 249 degrees. That's great temps. And um, 132 degrees on the right side, 121 degrees on the left side for these pork butts. I have not picked up that lid for one reason, because it's maintaining temps. That's the main thing. And that little dial here, now remember, that there's no batteries, no nothing. It's just all mechanical with that spring. And this thing is really working good. The only thing that I have to suggest, if you guys buy this, I mean, it's only 40 bucks, but I'm telling you, it maintains the temps. I left the bottom vent closed the whole time, other than the fact that Every hour, I will come and just shake the just shake the coals out, you know. But anyway, as you guys see, this thing has been performing this job very nice. But as you can see here, this thing is broke. Maybe if I tap on it, it'll come up more. Yeah, that thing is broke. There's no way that this trusty thermometer is going to tell me different great temps. I mean, look at that. I mean, how can we be 250 degrees here at great temps and be below 
200 degrees here. I mean, come on. Never trust a stock temp gauge. That's why I always upgrade them, just like over here, to the River Country gauge. Now, th there's nothing in here right now. But I just want to show you guys that this is why I upgrade. But that tip top temp gauge is awesome. Hey, um, I watched some videos on this with people using this thing. Can somebody tell me exactly why some of these rings say Maverick on them? Did Maverick originally own this and then they sold it to this tip top temp company? Can somebody shed some light on it, please? One thing I do know is I got a dependable meat thermometer to tell me what my temps are doing inside and out. Now I know it's probably hard to see from the lighting, but this is the one that we're gonna leave on until it finishes up cooking. I did take this and lift it up like nothing, and I had no problems with this um, tip top temp falling off or anything like that. Not a problem at all. As long as you set it on there right, it's, it'll be fine. Now over here uh, is a pork butt that I pulled. Golly, I wish I had different lighting. But it's got a great bark. Everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this with some heavy-duty aluminum foil. I'm just going to put one layer over the top and let it rest until this one gets finished. Now, I did pull that other probe out, but we're sitting at about 134 degrees internal temps. And, of course, our uh, temps are going to climb. I did not adjust this at all. The only thing I've been doing is at the bottom was adjust or just ashing out the coals to keep those consistent temps. Okay, everybody. Well, I have the other one wrapped up here. I'm going to let that sit for at least an hour or less. And uh, over here, the last one here, I'm going to take once it's finished. And once it hits uh, internal temps of uh, 145 degrees, I'm going to pull it and just let it sit out and cool off. And once it's completely cooled off, I'm going to throw it in the freezer, try to do a reheat on this just to see if any of the flavors had changed or whatnot. All right, everybody, the moment of truth to see how this pork butt turned out with the tip top temp. Ooh. Look at that color. So far, I'm pretty impressed. We let this rest for about an hour. What I'm going to do is just pull this out here. And here are the juices that were left over. Now let's go ahead and get some slices out of it. Just going to cut this off right quick. Looking good, guys. Okay, check this out. As you guys can see, look at that moisture running through that. Can you guys see that? I'm not sure. Exactly. Got a nice smoke ring, a nice crust. All right, guys. So stay tuned because I'm going to take the other pork butt that's cooling right now and we're going to freeze it. And then in a couple months or whenever we decide to reheat it. All right, everybody, my final thoughts on this cook. Okay, well, for one, I highly recommend getting this tip-top temp. It's only 40 bucks and it works great. No batteries, that's like the key in this whole thing. Other than that, as far as the pork butts go, doing them to slices to 145 to 150 degrees, I don't recommend that. I mean, it was good, and I was missing the uh, footage on the taste test part of it. Couldn't find it, so sorry about that. But either way... It turned out good, but obviously you got a lot of fat in there because none of it really rendered out. But it still was juicy and all that. I'm going to tell you right now, I probably will never do it again. The only time you're going to see me doing pork butts at 145 to 150 degrees is if I'm going to let it completely cool, vacuum seal it, and put it in the freezer for a later date to bring back to a pulled pork state. Okay. Keep the 145, 150-ish degrees to the sirloin family of... Of the pork be your best bet so anyway 
uh, to end this video and let's wrap it up. If you like what you saw, you know, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, uh, share to your friends, and have a great day.